Animal songs for $300 to the pot. According to the lyrics of this 1967 hit song by a famous singing duo, orangutans are skeptical. Orangutans, wink. Oh. <laughs> did I say orange? I didn't. No, I didn't. I did not say that. I'm going to start all over. Welcome back to TBL. Don't let that funny moment fool you. Our special guest is a master of words. He's a legendary game show host known for his time on Debt, Gambit, and of course, Tic-Tac-Toe. Please welcome the legendary, there he is, Wink Martindale. Thank you, thank you. Wink, you look incredible, and of course you sound great. Exactly for, the same. <laughs> for someone with a six decade career under their belts, what moments from your game show days ended up sticking with you the most? Bloopers like we just saw, or when a contestant wins big? I hate that blooper, I hate that. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. I mispronounce I think, words all the time, so don't worry. I think that uh, when Tom McKee uh, was our biggest winner on Tic-Tac-Toe, he was on for 47 straight days, he won about three hundred and fifty thousand wow. dollars, and in the '70s, that was that was a record until Ken Jennings beat that record big time on Jeopardy. Wow. Wink, that's amazing. I got to tell you about the orange thing, too. I, I didn't think I could ever follow in your career after that. I'm like, that's me. Me and Wink are the same guy. I do, I do it all the time, Wink, so don't worry about it. I got to know, Wink, where did that name come from? Where did the name Wink come from? Because it's so classic. Well, my real name is Winston, and I had a kid that we played with in the neighborhood growing up uh, named Jimmy McCord, and he couldn't say Winston, Aww. and it came up sounding somehow like Winky. So I became <laughs> the Winky Martindale, and of course, you don't get into this business with a name like Winky, so I shortened it to Wink, and it served me well over the years. Oh, wow. It sure has. Well, that, that's that. a great story. I should have been Kaka because that's how everyone pronounced my name, um, who couldn't enunciate words for Erica. Um, <laughs> thankfully, that didn't stick. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, now, Sam mentioned your six decade career. You also have hosted 21 shows. So, do you have a favorite show? I think that I would have to say tic-tac-toe simply because I got used to those checks coming in on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I did it for almost 13 years. So, plus, everybody seemed to know how to play. It was a simple game. Everybody could understand it. And I think that was the reason for its success over the years. Wow. And, Wink, I've noticed that there's, of course, you know, a return of some old game shows, like the dating game. Why do you think that there's a classic uh, game show comeback right now? And is there a possibility that we could get you and one of your game shows back? Come on, Wink. I I, I think I've got one more good game show hosting job left in me, so I, I, I'm hoping to get that phone call one of these days. Yes. But I think that the, the classic shows are the best shows, and so I think that's the reason you see classic dating game and that sort of thing coming back. So, wait, I think you're ready to go right now. I mean, you got the jacket <laughs> on, you got the tie. I mean, I, I think you're ready to step onto a set right now. If, yep. you could, if you could host anything right now, Wink, not one of your old shows, but maybe one that's more current, what would you jump in? What would you like to host? Good question. Jeopardy. Ooh. Jeopardy. Ooh, Jeopardy producers. No question about it. Are you listening? Uh, <laughs> I, what do you make of the current trend to pick a celebrity, though, to host these game shows? Well, I think celebrities or, or regular hosts, uh, you know, they all do a good job. If you're a celebrity and you're a good host, you're going to do a good job of hosting a game show. If you're just a, a, a person off the street, you're a good host, you'll do a good job hosting a game show. Doesn't matter. Wink, you're be building up my energy here. Wink, do you have a, do you have any Instagram? Or I heard you might even have a, a YouTube. YouTube. I think you have a YouTube, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. What do you do on there? I'd I mean, I'm having a great time right now. I don't know about everybody else. You want to be best <laughs> I want to meet my week. I want to hang out is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of different uh, game shows on there. I have a friend, uh, John Ritchie Jr., who works with me on on uh, on that channel. And uh, we, we, we're we always putting things up that I think people will enjoy if they'll just tune in. Take a look. All right. I know. Everybody, make sure you go to the YouTube. But what's interesting is we already have viewers that are already subscribed to your YouTube channel, Wink. Before we let you go, we would be sorry if we didn't ask you about um, your run-in with Elvis. Now, many yeah. might know that you discovered Elvis as a disc jockey in Memphis. But, Wink, we're going to play a special video right now for our audience. Look at that. It shows a very young you talking wow. to a very young Elvis who's leaning on a jukebox. Tell me the story behind this. Well, that's uh, Elvis uh, guesting on my top 10 dance party. I had wow. a, I was sort of the Dick Clark of, a, 
of, of Memphis in the uh, in the fifties, and he came on my show because I had become his friend the night he was discovered in 1954. I'm the only living person of six people who were in the control room the night that That's All Right Mama, the first Elvis record, was played on the radio. Wow. So as a result of that friendship, he came on my uh, television show, and he remained my friend. And Oh no! Until the day he left. Oh, phew! I thought that you were freezing because I want to learn. Like, what was Elvis like? Was he? What was he like? Give us something about Elvis that none of us would know. I think that uh, if I, I had to answer that this way, he gave away more money than anybody has any knowledge of. He didn't want a lot of. Uh, uh, he didn't want a lot of notoriety about uh, charitable givings that he made. And so I think that that, above everything else, I think is something that perhaps the average person wouldn't know about this person who was, who was just an ordinary guy from Tupelo, Mississippi. He said to me one time, Wink, I can't believe that this is happening to me. Aww. I said, I asked him one time, I said, in my interview that you played a minute ago, I said, Elvis, did you have any idea when you were going to Humes High School in Memphis that this would be happening to you? He said, Wink, I didn't expect to get out of Humes High School. Wow, <laughs> That's unbelievable. Wait, dinner on us. When this whole pandemic's over, dinner on us. You, you tell us stories all night. We'll go out to dinner. Erica knows all the hot spots. Yes. <laughs> we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Come here anytime. Just, just give me a call. Just give me a call. You, hey, me I'm too. picking you up. I'm me, taking... me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the reservation. There we go. Wink Martindale, thank you so much for being here today. You've earned yourself a break from working, but that's not your style. You have a special project up your sleeve that's all about rock and roll. In 30 seconds, please. Please tell us more about that. Okay, starting this year, later this year, I think around April 15th, the history of rock and roll will be told by yours truly. And we'll start in the 1950s and the mid 50s when rock and roll really started with That's All Right Mama by Elvis and Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and the Comets. And um, it'll be a two hour weekend program for syndication. Stations around the country will be carrying it. And I'm really looking forward to telling the story, the history. Wow. of rock and roll. I'll be tuning in. Everybody tune in. How fascinating. You are fascinating. Thank you for joining us. I can't wait for our big dinner. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.